uh, or some universities, you came out of meeting with workers, um, with the academic staff, and with the students, and you were hoping that the past staff was not present, but they were. And there's a clear consensus that comes from that meeting that we want the road statute to move, but we must also make it clear that this movement is not just about the statute. This movement is about general institutional <laughs> institutional racism and the statute is a mere symbolism of what we're fighting for. Mm -hmm. What we want at this university firstly is curriculum change. Mm -hmm. We can't be in a black university having a Eurocentric curriculum and being told in a very kind way black knowledge and black uh, African epistemology means nothing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Transformation is all about 
taking something and encouraging it and then changing it into something else. By ripping the statue down, that's not transformation, that's detonation. By leaving it where it is, <laughs> by leaving it as it is, we continue to propagate the ignorance that is, you know, saturating the entire issue. What we could do is change the way the statue stands, have some kind of symbolic way of saying, yes, this has happened, yes, it was terrible, but we are moving on from this without having to be violent, without having to be angry with each other. And in a way that's not very constructive, we're trying to be a nation here, not a, a nation of white people or black people. We're trying to be a nation of people that stand together. We can see each other, that has nothing to help again. Thank you. 
and by that school of thought that happened 20 years ago when our leaders should have sat at the table and actually reflected our demand. Which goes back to the comment, not only here but in outside spaces, about the legitimacy of the SRC's decision or their position on the topic. There's a whole movement going around that right now that so when people are criticizing and calling the SRC not the SRC. But we seem to forget, or not necessarily the people who are sitting here, we seem to forget that the constitution of the SRC says if a member of the SRC resigns, the person who's next on the list fills that position. So when people are saying, this is not my SRC, you are saying that the next person on the list didn't receive the votes that they needed to, to be on that ballot at all. It's not necessarily the people who, if people resign, that's not necessarily our students' fault or the SRC's fault. They reflect the mandate of the students. The people who are on SRC making those decisions reflect the people who make up this university and the decisions that they tell um, <laughs> I'm still in my mind between okay, some things about growth and whatever, all right? So I'm thinking if I go tomorrow, I might have to not go to class. I might not have to get, I mean, I, I, I live in North and South Cape so if the SRC promises to get, she can get my <laughs>
have to register by the FOC and the Student Society and Organization Committee, which is inclusive and representative of students, aims to serve the community in general and diverse student body. And our media societies are not allowed to take the stance on the matter. If anyone has any individual queries, they can contact the members of the staff. I've got quite a few things to say, so I'll say it as fast as I can. I think um, there are some people actually here who still don't know why the statue has a very much shopping day. So I think some people need, uh, there was a call earlier for people to be educated. And I think we have to hear from the most important person of all. So I want to quote from Cecil John Rose himself. <laughs> I want to run through this quickly. So. Okay, so this is what Cecil John Rhodes himself said. Um, first of all, let me just say a statue is not a neutral thing. And it definitely has no negative connotation. A statue is there to celebrate and to honor someone. All right? And as the VC said, the specific position within which that statue is located, not in some corner, um, adds uh, a, different, uh, a different kind of significance. But let me just quote the Rhodes himself. And for the gentleman also who said that he didn't uh, hate black people only, you know, just think about this. He said, we must find new lands from which we can easily obtain raw materials and at the same time exploit cheap slave labor that is available for the natives of the colonies. These colonies would also provide a dumping ground for the surplus goods provided you know, produced in our factory. Um, that's just one. He said these in his speeches and letters and so on. I can give you the Nine tenths of them, speaking about that, nine tenths of them will have to spend their lives in manual labor, and the sooner that is brought home to them, the better. I contend that we are, so he's talking about English, he says, I contend that we are the first race in the world, and that the more of the world we inhabit, the better it is for the human race. Second last one, second last one. Remember that you are an Englishman and have, and have consequently won first prize in the last year of life. Okay, so thank you. No, 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 I've got some stuff. I think someone is going to do this. Okay, okay. So just final point, please. No, I have, I have a few things. I'll do it fast. Okay. So he said, Africa is still lying waiting for us. It is our duty to take it. It is our duty to see, to see every opportunity in acquiring more territory. And we should keep this one idea steadily before our eyes that more territory simply means more of the Anglo Saxon race, more of the best, the most human, the most honorable race the world possesses. So let me just quickly say, besides what Cecil has said, um, I agree, okay, this is a P. I agree with the person who said, uh, Monica, I agree with what you said. Uh, we don't have permission, but it would be better to get it, so it's why I'm trying to educate them so that they can get on board. <laughs> okay, getting 80% for it says it's not as good as getting 90, so I'm just trying to get, you know, a little bit better. Uh, and then, I think so there were examples of statues that have fallen in the past. Lenin in at least three cities that I can think of right now, Saddam, Stalin. We don't forget about them. Yeah. Uh, it does not change history. Thank you. We all know these names. Mm -hmm. So it's not over it's not uh, overreactionary to say that it's changing history. But the place as the VC said should not be there. And the last point I want to say is there are people who say but Cecil gave him that. First of all, he didn't give him black people, as you can see from his stats. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's yeah. That's and then finally the last very last thing I'll say. People like him did give the land, yes. but they did also give us things like Robin Island and Don Pass and <laughs> <laughs>
My name is Matthew Grant. I'm an observer, but I also belong to the UCT Workers Solidarity Committee. And whilst the discussion we're having now is about institutional racism, I do want to ask whose hand put that statue in? The hands of workers, under orders. Whose hands, if you wanted to move that statue and take it down, whose hands are going to do that? The hands of workers, right? At this university, there is a climate of institutional racism, you're right. There's a climate of sexism, there's a climate of classism. It's about power, it's about exploitation. And who is exploited by those in power the most at this place? Black women workers.
opinion, but one also has to realize that there will be responses to the opinion, like laughter or agreement or applause. Uh, but can I just remind you all to be respectful? Uh, just because someone disagrees with your opinion doesn't mean you need to be disrespectful towards them. Uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, the first thing is that uh, the university must uh, find a way of resolving the issue around the command because the university must take responsibility for the environment that it has created for those who disagree with many issues that are happening. And I'm not saying this to get applause for anything that's happening. Well, by the way, you know what we're talking about. You know. One of the people that was, uh, has been taken to a criminal court by a management of this university. You know what we're talking about. You know how long a, a case can drag in this university. Here. We know it. For something that you are said to have done in faith to get charged on a day before the examination commences. You know that thing. So, uh, we must continue to push that. And one thing I want to emphasize is that it's important. When you speak about the issues that are attached and linked to the fall of time, it is important that that unity continues even when tomorrow the statue actually falls. Yeah. So that it does not become a situation where, because I know there are some classes which should have never fallen to, they are saying it must fall because they want to run away from the issue. So I'm saying that, and the, and the last thing, part of what wants to transform is also the racism and that or yes, the racism and that exists within some sections in our university community. And I want to caution to those who have stormed with this on the, on the issue that those must fall. Don't be intolerant because part of the racism, there's no person here who spoke. There's no one here who can say they used to apartheid in that literal sense. The reason why they might have the views that they have it's the very same reason that we are calling for curriculum content because on a daily basis they sit with arrogant uh, white supremacist lecturers who indoctrinate them with this uh, this teaching of white supremacy and everything that comes with them and so forth. So in our approach, this is a plea: don't want to close down the engagement. Don't want to not listen to someone because they have a different opinion. Because they are missing an opportunity to actually convince that person of what you say. Just last night, I apologize. On the issue, I, I really feel strong. Let us not uh, boycott Congress. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because I know a lot of members of committees who are a problem in this university. A lot of members of council, senate, uh, institutional forums who would actually uh, celebrate to see a, a community sitting without a student voice. Yeah. Because the voices that are not going here, it's not 25,000 students. It's the very same students who are actually affected by the existence of that study. It's not going to assist. We know this. There are people, Jacques Rousseau, he said it himself, that the fact that people have walked out doesn't delegitimize the essence of the meeting. And they are going to do that in those days. Yeah. So let's uh, use correct tactics to improve our strategies and ensure that at no stage where it is put a representative council. And you can't, it's not possible to represent us only on the seat. There are committees where you must be. If you are a minority, you are being undermined. Your responsibility is to fight as you said you are going to do so. It's not an excuse, the fact that you are a minority. It can't be an excuse. <laughs> But if it means that you do whatever is necessary, and what you do, you do, you cheat you. <laughs> and and you know, that, that, that committee does not say do so. That is, a, that is why there is a representative in each and every committee in this university. But running away from such does not assist the cause that you are saying we are fighting. That is my question.